What's up, tea sippers? In this video, we're gonna be looking at which is better, this 20 and $200 pot, three different levels that you might be interested in, some key terms you're gonna to wanna to look at when considering teapots, and then finally, which one you should pick up if you're looking to get a new teapot. Three terms that we only talk about when referencing teapots that no one else in the rest of the ceramics community talks about. Mold made, half hand, and fully handmade. Paul, who is supposed to be able to read that? Mold made pots are shot into a mold with diluted clay. Anywhere besides the teapot world, there's plenty of people that say mold made pots are still handmade because it still took someone to make that original mold. For whatever reason in the tea world, it doesn't work like that. The next two are literally translated directly from Chinese, ban shou gong, which means half hand made, and chuan shou gong, which means completely or fully handmade. A half hand can often be confused with mold made because there's molds used in the making of half handmade pots. So let me put it away that's a little bit more clear. Mold made pots are cast, like think of a sword, metal, forge, right? It's just poured in, sat, dries, and then it's ready. Half hand pots use a mold, or if you think of like woodwork, a jig to set it up, but you still already have to have shaped the piece and you're still gonna do work on it after the fact with a half handmade piece. In fact, if it's a teapot, you still have to put the spout on, you still have to put the handle on, you still have to put everything else on. It just helps you getting it to the shape you want faster for the body. Handmade, going back to the chuan, right? Fully means there's no use of molds or jigs, but that's also not true. Sometimes there are still tools used to help shape it. So primarily not using tools or jigs. Sometimes helping shape the spout just makes it a little bit easier. Oh, and if you like the pot that I'm brewing with, it's gonna be available next week on our store. So make sure you subscribe because we're gonna do a live where I'll do more pour tests with all of our new pots for February, including our special Valentine's Day drop. But when you're looking at mold half or fully handmade, it's weird that some of the cheapest mold made and some of the nicest handmade pots actually have some of the most similarity. Pot thickness and pouring smoothness are one of the hardest things for new potters to get their hands around. So a cheaper handmade pot isn't going to perform as well as a mold made pot. But even the most beginner handmade pot is gonna have character, which these mold made pots won't because they haven't had hands touch them. They haven't been shaped and formed. They've just been created, molded. I've had a few people mention how they found a really great thrift store pickup, or they picked up this amazing Yi Xing pot for practically nothing. But for the sake of this video, when we talk about price, what we're gonna talk about is the market price for teapots, both in the West and in the East. Mold made pots are typically gonna be less than $50. They have different designs on them and sometimes different glazes. $100 pots are typically gonna be the best value when you start getting into that, again, character that we talk about with handmade work with maybe some slight imperfections or differences or variances because it's still a newer potter. $200 pots are gonna be the best quality you can get as a consumer. Very little flaws, smooth pours, good balance, just all around really solid. When we get into the over $200 price point, this is where we get into specialty pots. Pots that are either wood fired, they have a wooden handle, maybe they have a clay inlaid landscape on the side. Something that took a lot more work than just putting the pot together. These over $200 pots, typically potters actually have to cut their margins on just to be able to sell them. So even though two, three, four hundred dollars may seem expensive, the potters are making less per hour making a specialty pot like this compared to like a two hundred dollar pot. Weird, right? Next, we have the over $500 category, and this can go anywhere from 500 to a couple thousand dollars. Typically, you're gonna be paying for the name as much as you are paying for the pot, but the quality on these is going to be superb, supreme, and you're gonna wanna take time to get to know these pots because the cost is in the subtlety here. But this is the last level we'll see in Western potters. In Asia, there's national level potters that go for tens of thousands of dollars. These are dedicated to national masters, living legends who have changed the teapot and ceramic industry. Somebody like Master Alian in Taiwan's pots go for thirty to fifty thousand dollars because of all the innovation and all the acclaim and fame that has come around everything he has designed. And it takes years of brewing to understand why these pots have value. Quick speed round, what are you gonna get at each price point? At the hundred dollar price point in the US this is gonna be new potters. In China this is gonna be apprentices, people working under masters, typically in a group fashion to make their pot. At the two hundred dollar price point we're looking at both studio potters. These are either apprentices who have moved out to have their own studio studio in China. In the US, this is gonna be people who have dedicated around 10 years of their life. They have their own studio in their house. Very fundamentally good understanding of how teapots are made. And they probably drink a lot of tea. <laughs> These over $200 pots in the West are gonna be studio plus potters. So people who are already studio potters doing specialties. Like I said, wood handle, wood firing, things like that. 
At the $500 price point in the West, we really only have a handful of people who are doing it their whole entire lives and are well known in the ceramics industry. In China, this could be a second level master, so a provincial level master, Yixing factory one pots because they're more rare, or your silver pots. Anytime you see those 100% pure silver pots that are made in Yunnan, national masters only in the East, where there's already a developed tea culture and people already understand the value of tea and teaware and, and have made a whole life around it. With all that info though, you're probably still wondering which one of these should you pick up if you're looking to get a teapot. That $100 to $200 price point is gonna get you the most value and most quality without getting too expensive for paying for somebody's name or too cheap that it doesn't quite have enough character. If that's too expensive for you though, grab a mold made Gaiwan. This is gonna be a better bang for your buck and because there's not as much style and character in the shaping of them, it's just gonna be a better overall purchase. It's why a lot of potters that I know in the US don't make Gaiwans because they don't feel like there's enough character and they have enough art that they can put into a Gaiwan versus a teapot. For those 500 and above, just, just ignore them. So you've got 10 to 20 other pots, you have a full collection of tea, it just, you don't need them. And you're probably not gonna notice the difference in the quality of a two and a five hundred dollar pot when you're starting. I'm just being honest. Now if you want to know how to taste test and compare your teas, check out this video right here. All right, I gotta go drink more tea.